17 Relationship Truths Every Couple Can Connect With Whether if you are starting a new relationship or trying to restore an old one, it's reasonable to not know what you're doing. Every relationship is different and every problem needs a different solution. Knowing this, we will share with you 17 truths every couple can connect with. Welcome to Life Bean, and today we'll be presenting you with 17 relationship truths every couple can connect with. But before, don't forget to watch the whole video, and remember to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive more amazing content like this. Okay, now we can get started. Number 1. An absence of conflict isn't a badge of honor in a relationship. A lack of conflict can often mean that to preserve serenity and peace, one or both partners may be holding back and not expressing their true feelings, which may produce longer-term discontent. If you get two people together in almost any relationship context, conflicts will be inevitable. That's okay and normal. Conflict also doesn't have to mean fistfights and screaming matches. Appropriately, expressed conflict can strengthen a relationship over time by teaching both people how to negotiate their inevitable differences more skillfully. Number 2. Consider how you want to feel in your relationship and realize that this may not be as you expected. It's essential to think about how you want to feel in your relationship, not necessarily how you want it to look. Think about how you want it to feel in your ideal relationship and practice being open to this partner somewhat different than what you have been imagining. Number 3. The honeymoon phase ends for everyone. The honeymoon phase, the phase where we're all falling in love and have days filled with romance and delight. It's exciting, it's animating, it's fun. Also, it's not permanent. When we're in the honeymoon stage, a cocktail of hormones floods our brain, like norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. These hormones contribute to the obsessive quality of the honeymoon stage. By design, these hormones decrease over time. The end of the honeymoon stage period simply means that the next step is beginning, the individuation stage. Number 4. Almost everyone will one day think, what was I thinking marrying this person? This is natural. Sometimes questioning yourself and your decision to get with your spouse slash partner is inevitable. Having two polar thoughts and feelings can exist in the same relationship. This doesn't mean that you're in the wrong relationship or that you have wild mood swings. It is a normal part of being in a long-term relationship and reflective of the paradoxical feelings we can hold towards another human being. Number 5. Imagining that other people have easier times in their relationships. But this isn't true. We rarely know what goes on behind the doors of a home or in the universe constellated between a couple. Most of us simply don't show all the raw, vulnerable, painful realities of our relationship to one another, not on social media. So please, be compassionate with yourself and your own relationship experience if you compare your partnership to others. Number 6. You will have many relationships within your one relationship. You will fall in and out of love with your partner over time. The shift in balance of power and roles in the relationship may change as you two navigate different life stages and, almost certainly, you will feel the ebbs and wanes of attraction to them. Who you fell in love with in the earlier days of your relationship may change, and likely, so will you on how your partner feels towards you. That's okay as long as, per point four above, the two of you are willing to grow and get to know the new versions of your partner over time. Number 7. Equitable, not equal division across the quadrant of labor board is what we're aiming for. It's important that the division of labor across the quadrant feels equitable for a couple. It doesn't have to look equal. Both partners don't necessarily have to equally contribute 100k or divide the chore list totally down the middle. If the division of labor across the quadrant looks skewed but feels okay and equitable to a couple, that's fine. It's when the division across the quadrant feels imbalanced and resentment provoking that we want to be curious and mindful about changing this. Also, the division across the quadrant labor board between any given couple will inevitably look different, so please don't compare what works for you and your partner to anyone else. Number 8. Relationships require tending to like any pet or plant or living entity. This may be a fairly obvious point, but relationships require work, energy, and attention. Much like a plant or pet, if you neglect it too much, you'll see the impacts of neglect. If you tend to it, you'll see that impact too. 
how much you can and want to tend to your relationship may look different over time. But it's important that for any couple at any stage of their relationship to be curious about how they are or are not tending to the relationship and what reasonable and realistic tending to the relationship could look like now. Number 9. Getting to know someone takes time and repeated circumstances to unfold. Dating someone and getting to know them takes a lot of time and circumstances to unfold. Think years. Coming full circle back to point number one, the honeymoon stage isn't always grounded in reality. Thanks, hormones. How your partner responds when your sex life starts to wane or when one or both of you get sick, when commutes and long work weeks start to wear on you, when challenging times arrive, this shows more clearly the person you are partnered with. And this also gives you the opportunity, per points three and four, to discover if the person you are with and if you are willing and open to working on the stuff in context in these more challenging times. Number 10. You have to love yourself before you can love another person. How can you expect to genuinely love another person's qualities if you have trouble accepting your own? Once you are confident in yourself, others will notice you more. When you accept yourself for who you are, you will be able to fully appreciate and understand the best qualities of other people. Number 11. There needs to be a balance of intimacy and space. Show interest in your significant other's hobbies and work, but don't intrude. Also, invite him or her into your own world. Spend time together, but don't make it seem like you always need to be together in order to be happy. Share information about yourself that you wouldn't normally share, your stories, your aspirations, your fears. Make yourself vulnerable. Encourage your partner to do the same. Listen. Number 12. Communication is paramount. Be on the same page as your partner, or at least be on the same chapter. I was in a relationship in which my girlfriend and I were in completely different books. As corny as it sounds, honesty is actually the best policy. Be honest with yourself and be honest with your partner. Number 13. Relationships are like shoes. Some look stylish on the outside, but only the person wearing them knows the pain they bear inside. Walking in a new pair is like being with a new person, unfamiliar at first, but as you break them in, you develop a sense of security. You reach that comfort zone in which you rarely need to untie the laces. Some shoes you outgrow, some get worn out. Some cause you pain or leave you exposed. Some shoes you wear anywhere. Some shoes get dirty, and when you wear them, you can't forget where they've been. Some shoes you hesitate to throw away. Some people wear shoes until they're soulless. Number 14. You will feel enraged, indignant, and unappreciated at times. The feelings will feel so big, it's like they're going to swallow you whole and breathe flames of wrath onto your partner. You will then learn to zip your lip as you watch these big feelings pass through you so that you can communicate from a clear and non-reactive place. This is a spiritual practice. Number 15. You will age together. You will witness each other graying, wrinkling, sagging, and scarring. This can be a source of grief if you hold on to an old picture of your partner, or a source of joy as you hold and celebrate each other through the seasons of a life. Number 16. If you're not making mistakes, you're not taking enough risks. By mistakes, I mean doing things within the boundaries of a relationship with good intent, and then taking responsibility from them if they were not healthy. Without mistakes, there is no growth, so this process stimulates change and growth. The glue coming in, taking risks and making mistakes as a couple, then learning from them and becoming stronger as a team. Number 18. Busy is a decision. Just because you're in love doesn't mean it's time to stop life. Each partner should have his or her own life. This means making a choice to be busy and work on your own container. I think many people get into this relationship and stop or slow down their personal busyness. We hope you enjoyed this video. Which of these truths were more exciting for you? Let us know in the comments down below. Remember to like this video, share with all your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to receive more amazing content like today, don't forget to turn the notifications on. We'll see you soon.